So my name is Jakob Hagren. I am the Swedish ambassador to the Republic of Korea. I have had the privilege to live here with my family since uh, almost two and a half years now. I arrived in, in, in 2018 and I am so happy to be the Swedish ambassador because there's so much you know, to build on in this uh, relation. One of the areas is of course the, the climate issues and green issues. For a long time, and I mean several decades, there has been a strong, shall we call it, green movement in Sweden. Uh, so there was a green party which entered parliament already in the 1980s. But for a long time it was kind of a fringe interest. But I would like to say that in the last 20 years, this interest and this realization that we need to take care of the nature and of environment has become much more widespread and widely supported across all sectors of society. And I think that with the Paris Climate Agreement in 2015, that was the time when it was ready to become a law which all parties uh, supported. So in 2015, the Swedish parliament, the Riksdag, decided a green policy framework which stipulated that all laws, all activities of the Swedish government or in society should always consider the, the, you know, the greening of, of you know, the green uh, or pollution aspects of, of, of whatever you're doing. And then a little bit later, uh, this was turned into a climate law, which means that you really always need to take care of the green uh, aspects. And, uh, you know, a law is nothing if uh, the people who are supposed to follow the law, uh, you know, really respect it and, and, and believe in it. So another thing that I would like to highlight is something called Fossil Free Sweden, which is essentially an, a voluntary uh, uh, organization, if you will. But that organization consists of all the industry sectors of Sweden, including also public authorities, etc., who have decided that we would like to green our specific sector. So these are some of the uh, you know, policies and examples of, of, of uh, you know, how we implement the, the green transition in Sweden. Actually, the plans are even more ambitious than that. Idea of greening air transport, that's only one of maybe 20 different industrial sectors where the industry representatives, together with uh, public officials, have decided that we will try to make this transformation. So when it comes to uh, uh, green air transport through uh, biofuels, this is supposed to be all green for domestic flights already in 2030 and for all international flights in 2045. So the technology is there. It's just a question of the willingness and the courage to invest in that, in that technology. But the same type of commitment you will find in steel or in transport or in forestry or in agriculture or in construction. And they all strive to make this change change. This is a movement almost that has happened over quite a few years. Uh, you know, in Sweden we have a 
big country with a wonderful nature and since many years there has been this feeling that we need to preserve our wonderful nature. And, and we have seen so, through some of the more extreme weather events that climate change is bringing uh, quite uh, you know, negative impacts and we need to do something to counter that. And for a small country, which is very much advanced when it comes to technology, export and innovation, many people in the private sector realize that we have an opportunity to be ahead of the curve. So when they are investing in these uh, green technologies, in, in fossil free or low carbon technologies, they are doing it because they realize that this is something that they might earn money from in the future. Because if you are ahead of the curve, let's say in five years or in 10 years, all countries uh, on earth realize that we need to do this transformation. If we are ahead when it comes to te technological solutions, then we will have great business opportunities. And this is what have been uh, discovered in all of these industry uh, sectors. But it has been, of course, pushed by the fact that there has been legislation which has pushed them to do this and which has created also a level playing field. So it hasn't been profitable to cheat on uh, pollution because the law would abide uh, uh, the same to all and then those who would like to exceed those goals and those legal requirements would earn money uh, from, from that because this is kind of a global trend. I think that, unfortunately, the best argument is how we see that the climate crisis is creating more extreme weather. Whether it is heat waves, more uh, cyclones, the worsening of the air pollution, all of that is becoming worse as a result of, of the climate uh, crisis. So uh, I think this is, it's a responsibility for the politicians, it's a responsibility for, for uh, uh, private business, uh, but I think that the, you know, people, uh, the common, you know, ordinary, every citizen like myself or you or anyone else can, you know, first of all, speak their minds and they can also make choices using less plastic, buying more organic uh, food or organic pro and kind of put up, like, you know, consumer uh, pressure. And, and, you know, maybe start a petition if there is an obvious uh, climate uh, or, or environmental problem in your, in your neighborhood. Because politicians will take note of that. They are sensitive to what the electorate uh, thinks. Uh, so I, I think it's important that, you know, people realize the link between climate crisis and fossil dependency. And that that needs to go down uh, as one example. When I was 15 or 16 years ago, you know, I was part of such a climate campaign. We had, uh, you know, we had a factory in my hometown which was polluting, so we uh, organized a petition and we got hundreds of signatures and then we gave that to the mayor and this, together with other actions, actually made that company changed. They had to put in a more effective filter uh, so that they would not pollute so much. You know, and I'm just one example of a person who, who thought that this was very important. And this is like widely felt in Swedish society among people that we need to take good care of the nature because that's our future. <music>